Hello there. We can define self-discipline as the ability to control one's desires and actions. And it can be argued that one of the most important attributes in achieving success in any area of life is self-discipline. Why then does self-discipline elude most of us? As humans, we're wired to avoid things that are hard and uncomfortable. And there is a tendency to take the easy route even if it is not ultimately to our benefit. Interestingly, some studies have shown that one of the keys to self-discipline is to identify in clear terms the motivation behind goals we wish to achieve. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 25-27, All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. The desire for an attractive or compelling outcome can be a driver for self-discipline. For example, the desire to improve one's health can be a motivation to exercise daily or to eat healthy meals. Is there any area of your life in which you need to be more disciplined? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of self-discipline. After all, it is said that the first and best victory is to conquer oneself. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. These are the words of Leo Tolstoy, a Russian writer who is regarded as one of the greatest authors of all time. Change is inevitable, both at an individual level and at the level of society. Also, change can be uncomfortable, but it is good to know that you and I can make a lot of progress in our lives by making small changes to what we do and how we do things. Are there areas in your life in which you desire growth and progress? Take a pen and paper and write down what you know to do to trigger change in those areas. And most importantly, take action. Paul in 2 Corinthians 5.17 talks about the greatest change that can happen in a person's life. He said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Christ offers you newness of life today in every area of your life, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Why don't you take advantage of this opportunity while it still exists? After all, Jack Welch, who was the chairman and CEO of General Electric, once said, change before you have to. Time is an interesting concept, isn't it? In Philippians 3, Paul speaks about forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. While thanking God for April, have you written down your goals for the month of May? Make sure you include Bible reading on a daily basis in your plans. Also, in the month of May, plan to take actions that will put you on the path of growth in every aspect of your life. Miles Monroe in his book, Understanding Your Potential, wrote, People generally fall into three groups. The few will make things happen, the many will watch things happen, and the overwhelming majority will have no notion of what happens at all. Every person is either a creator of fact or a creature of circumstance. And on that note, I welcome you to this episode of Practical Reflections, a podcast series powered by the Logos Aflame Ministries. My name is Ella Ekins, your host on today's podcast. And as always, I bring special greetings from the senior pastor and founder of the Logos Aflame Ministries, Pastor Grace Orby Johnson.